Hello, this is your captain speaking. We would like to thank you for flying with us to Côte d'Azur. This time we will not go to Nice, but to a new runway that we have discovered in Mantor. We will land as soon as we get a little closer to the ground, so please return to your seats now. Smoking is no longer permitted in the laboratories. Fasten your seatbelt and raise the back of your seat to an uptight and most uncomfortable position. Thank you. Hello. I'm Jacobson and I'm here on the sunny, warm, relatively speaking, not very windy Côte d'Azur. Behind me you can see um, the border to Italy, which marks the end of uh, Côte d'Azur. Now I'm walking towards Italy, eastwards on my terrace. You may say that I'm zooming with my feet, but in fact I have a 28 to 200 millimeter zoom lens on my camera, so I should be able to get a closer view of the border crossing over there if I can keep the camera steady. So there, what you see over there is Italy and the border town of Ventimiglia with the Bodeghera sticking out in the Mediterranean at the very tip. The reason why I decided to make this video is that I just read a book which is called uh, Winter and Spring on the Shores of the Mediterranean, written by the English doctor James Henry Bennett. My copy of this book is from 1870, but it was first published in 1861, as you can see here. Uh, in the book I found a picture showing the view from where I stand now, more or less, but 170 years ago. At that time it looked like this. I shall tell you more about Dr. Bennett, but I would like also to show you the same view today, seen from where I am right now. What you see dominating both these pictures, I think, is the tower of the Basilica of St. Michael the Archangel. That is the church you see in the middle of the photo. It was built 350 years ago, but it ha has not changed much. The rest of Manteau is very different, but I know that Dr. Bennett and his book can be credited for some of this development. He was uh, the first who discovered and popularized Mantoa as a place of vacation and rehabilitation in uh, the mid-18th century. Now, if we look the other way, from Italy in this direction to where I'm right now, this is the view at Bennett's time. This is also from the book. Uh, this is what it looked like when you stood on Mortola, a little place across the border on the road from Genoa to France. I found this picture in Bennett's book and when I show you the same view today, you see it's more crowded, uh, of course, but it's not totally different. I put a red arrow on the, the photo here to show you where I'm right now. I'm making this video on the roof terrace of this building on the beach where this uh, red arrow ends. Uh, you know what Côte d'Azur is, don't you? If not, I can give you the facts. You have pen, pen and paper? No? I can wait. You find pen and paper, I'll give you all the facts. Okay. Are we ready? The Côte d'Azur starts over there in Bandol, the wine town of Bandol. Uh, and it ends here, in the lemon town of uh, Manteau. Or rather at the border to Italy over there. And this is a stretch of exactly 196 kilometers. And if you go by car, which I've done a few times, uh, the drive will take um, two hours and 11 minutes in average. Yeah, and, and you have to drive on uh, the A57 or the A8. And if you don't care about the speed limit, you can do this drive in uh, uh, maybe two hours, maybe less. Or if you go by, um, by helicopter or by plane, which I also done, uh, you can do this um, trip in 10 minutes and on the way you will from the air when you fly along this coast you will see that it actually looks like one big city around this with about 1 million inhabitants you will on, on the road on the on the flying route you will you will pass uh, 
famous places like Saint-Tropez, Cannes, Antibes, Nice, Monaco, Monte Carlo, and you will end here in the Pearl of France. That's not my word, Manteau. Actually, it's possible to see Monaco from uh, sort of from where I am now. I can grab the camera and I can go over and show you. Okay, we'll go over and show you. Uh, give you a glimpse of Monaco over here. I'll, I'm, I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in there. There you can see La Tête de Chien, or the dog's head, which is looking down on Monaco. What many people don't know is that Manteau used to be a part of Monaco until 1860. At that time, the Prince of Monaco ceded his right over Manteau and uh, Roquebrune to the Emperor of France for a payment of uh, 4 million francs. That doesn't sound like much, does it? After that, Manteau, squeezed in here between Italy and Monaco, became part of France. Dr. Bennett uh, visited Monaco, of course, and he liked the place. He writes in his book that Monaco, a little town perched on a rocky peninsula, all but surrounded by the sea, is itself very interesting. It is a calm and lovely spot on a fine sunny day, with its pretty little port, all but rocks surrendered, clear and blue, enlivened only by a few fishing boats. When Bennett visited, Monaco was actually the poorest country in Europe. It had just lost Roquebrune and Manteau, so it had no more lemons or olives to sell. There were not many fishermen either, and not many fish. But Monaco had just started in the gam gambling business, and uh, that turned out to be quite profitable. Especially since roulette became illegal in most other places in Europe. Later, Monaco went into the offshore business, also known as the tax haven business, and today some of the richest people in the world are living in Monaco. But their wealth is, uh, as we know, created elsewhere. One thing you may have heard about Manteau is that it is the warmest place on the French Riviera. It has the most stable climate on the, this coast, which is great especially in the winter, and the reason may be the Alps rising up behind the Manteau which you see here, because they serve to block the cold air, the wind and the rain coming in from the north. This is actually the beginning of what is called Alp Maritime, and um, sometimes they can make the winter in Manteau feel like a cold summer in uh, Scandinavia. Nice view, don't you think? If you want to buy this terrace and the apartment, just uh, drop me a line in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Have however to tell you about um, one problem I'll show you see that it's rusty you have to paint the railings I have to tell you I'm an honest seller so there are some work to do here you have uh, meter upon meter of uh, railing which has to be painted I don't know if you've been to Cannes in the winter, even though it's colder and usually usually windier in Cannes than in Manteau, Cannes was also uh, discovered as a resort because of its favorable climate. It was the former Lord Chancellor of England, uh, Lord Broham, Henry Peter Broham was his full name, who um, who made Cannes known as a popular place for vacation and retirement just like Dr. Bennett did uh, here in Manteau, and for exactly the same reasons. They both meant that the climate, and especially the sun on Côte d'Azur, was uh, good for your health. Uh, Dr. Bennett even believed that uh, the sun on Côte d'Azur could, could uh, cure serious diseases, such as tuberculosis. Obviously, he didn't understand how dangerous the sun can be, but I do. And I'm warning you, a sunburn is not only painful, it can be dangerous. It can cause uh, skin cancer. Uh, sunburn can cause uh, DNA damage to your skin. It can uh, accelerate aging. 
You can get uh, blisters with swelling and uh, red streaks and uh, even pus coming from out from your skin. You know, you may experience high fever, headache, severe pain, dehydration, terrible confusion, nausea, chills. So please be careful with the sun. I tell you, okay? But that was a digression. Let's get back to Lord Broham. It was because of his influence that the beachfront promenade in Nice became known as uh, Promenade des Anglais, which literally means the promenade of the English. But you probably knew that already. In Manteau, a more uh, modest street is named after Dr. Bennett. I took this uh, photo last time I was there. You may notice that they have spelled his name incorrectly. In his book, Bennett spells his name with only one T, while here on, in the center of Manteau, they have written it with two Ts. There is even a, a sculpture of Dr. Bennett, a monument raised to him in the center of Manteau. I never been there, I never seen it, but I found it on the map and I want to drive over there now and take a look at it. I wanted to see Dr. Bennett live, so to speak, and I think you would be interested too, so let's go. Okay, let's go. While we drive, I can tell you more about um, Dr. Bennett. He had been working as a doctor for uh, 25 years when he contracted tuberculosis. Or perhaps uh, he just thought that he had contracted tuberculosis. At last, resigning all professional duties, I wrapped my robes around me and departed southwards in the autumn of the year 1859 to die in a quiet corner, as I and my friends thought. It was not, however, to be so. The reminiscences of former travel took me to Mantona on the Genoese Rivera and under its uh, genial sky, freed from the labors and anxieties of former life, to my very great surprise, I soon began to rally. The second winter, I wished to find a locality even more favored, one more in the stream of life, present or past, and uh, sought for it in Italy. The search, however, was in vain and the unhygienic state of the large towns of that classical land partly undid the good previously gained. So I retraced my steps and again took refuge in the quiet, healthy Mantona. This is a quote from the beginning of Bennett's book. And uh, I asked myself why I sit here waiting for a green light. Uh, could, could it be I'm, I'm wasting my time? Uh, no, not really. Dr. Bennett's book became a bestseller in this time, especially when it was translated into German and Dutch. It was even published in the United States, I think. And all in all, there were nine uh, different versions. Uh, the one I have, which is the fourth version, uh, in it, Bennett felt that he could take credit for the success of Manteau as a resort. He was right, because not only was he miraculously cured of tuberculosis, but he was himself a, a famous doctor, a doctor with many famous patients. And uh, they believed him, his patients, when he claimed that all these serious diseases could be cured in Manteau because of the favorable climate. This, this reminds me of uh, Vladimir Nabokov uh, in Speak Memory, his uh, autobiography. Nabokov describes uh, his old and dying grandfather who was convinced that as long as he remained near the Mediterranean he would uh, regain his health, he would not die. But still the old man grew more and more sick and uh, he was unconscious in certain periods and one time he was unconscious uh, Nabokov's mother transferred grandfather back to St. Petersburg. This is what Vladimir Nabokov writes about his grandfather. 
As he slowly regained consciousness, my mother camouflaged his new quarters into the bedroom he had had in Nice. Some similar pieces of furniture were found and a number of articles rushed from Nice by a special messenger. And all the flowers his hazy senses had grown accustomed to were obtained in their proper variety and profusion. And part of the house wall that could be glimpsed from the window was painted in a brilliant white. So every time he reverted to a state of comparative lucidity, he found himself safe on the illusory Riviera artistically stretched by my mother. Among the many famous people who have visited Manteau in the old days, you have politicians like um, Winston Churchill, who was everywhere, as you know. And you have musicians like um, Paganini, Rubenstein, artists like Bursley, Matisse, Montpassin, Chekhov, uh, Nietzsche, Robert Louis Stevenson, who, by the way, was a patient of um, Bennett. You have uh, W.B. Yeats, Samuel Beckett, Blasco Ibanez, Catherine Mansfield, Catherine Mansfield from New Zealand, writer, and also another writer I just mentioned, Vladimir Nabokov. Nabokov was uh, was working uh, uh, in Manteau, and his short story Spring in Fialta takes place in this town. I don't have it here, so I cannot show it to you, but if you read it, you will see that Fialta obviously is Manteau. Nabokov might as well have called his uh, story Spring in Manteau instead of Spring in Fialta. What you see ahead of us now to the right which looks like uh, jaws or maybe like some yeah some like some giant teeth of a shark on the beach is actually a, an art museum it's uh, the Jean Cocteau museum which was built not many years ago uh, but we're not going there we are turning left in this roundabout in order to go to Dr. Bennett. Queen Victoria of England visited Manteau in 1882 with her daughter Princess Beatrice and her famous Scottish servant John Brown. Queen Victoria stayed in a villa called the Chalet de Rosière. Uh, this is a watercolor from the same year, from 1882, so you can see what it looked like at that time. But the villa is not uh, totally different today. I could uh, have driven up there now because some friends of mine, Rossi and Jürgen from Denmark, live there today in uh, Chalet de Rosière. But it's too late now. I, I may make another video at another time about this beautiful villa. Uh, but it reminds me of one thing. When I'm visiting in uh, Chalet de Rosière and I go out in the garden, I sometimes look down on a passing train. And I read that the rail link between Nice and Mintimiglia in Italy was opened 160 years ago, right before Dr. Bennett published his book. That meant that the coastal road could be avoided and most people thought that was a great advantage because the road to Manteau had often been subjected to dangerous mudslides. Uh, Dr. Bennett even mentioned the danger of being hit from above by a rock when driving along the sea from Monaco to Manteau. Still, in his book he advised his patients to arrive by road and not by train, in spite of the many dangers, in order to enjoy the wonderful spectacle, as he wrote. Here we are passing the city hall on the right, uh, in French known as a Hotel de Ville. Once I was invited in there and I drank a pastis with the mayor, uh, who unfortunately died recently. There is a famous Salle de Mariage, a wedding hall inside the city hall, uh, which has been decorated by um, uh, Jean Cocteau, the artist who now has his own uh, tooth rich museum on, on the beach in uh, Manteau, as we just uh, passed. Que voulez-vous, monsieur? Take your time. Okay, now uh, a word from our sponsor. This episode has been brought to you by uh, http wwwdefaultenotcom backslash html 
please check out their products. And if you buy something, you can click here or there or down there, somewhere, left or right. And you'll get a discount of 91 or 19 or 1.9 percent it's not much is it because actually i don't have any sponsor nobody wants to sponsor me that's a sad fact just kidding if i had a sponsor i probably wouldn't drive a car to look for dr bennett's monument i would have flown on quietly in a balloon or an airship decorated with with the logo of uh, Air France or Marlboro or any company that would support me. And then I could have uh, filmed Manteau from the air while talking about the city and about uh, Dr. Bennett. Uh, that would have been awesome. Or, or Marlboro is maybe a bad example. I don't think it's legal to advertise uh, cigarettes in uh, France or anywhere. Uh, but then again, who could stop me from smoking? Uh, who could stop me from taking a cigarette on my own video? Is that illegal? Maybe, maybe Marlboro is a perfect sponsor for me. So if you see this uh, Mr. Marlboro man, please send me a message. On va laisser une place, on s'en va. Oh yeah, okay. okay. No, Merci. I think I can see him now far ahead on a pedestal. I think I can see the bust of Dr. James Henry Bennett. I forgot to tell you that he was born in Manchester in 1816. His father owned a textile factory, so he came from a rich family. But he was still unlucky in his uh, childhood because he was only 13 years old when his father died. And then his mother, the widow, did something extraordinary. She uh, decided to move to Paris with her two children. 13-year-old uh, James and his older sister. I'll try to park the car here and then I'll, I'll try to zoom in on Dr. Bennett's face through the window so that you will get an impression of uh, the man who made Manteau into what it became 150 years ago. Um, well, um, the reason why he started to follow courses at Lucie St. Louis at the Faculty of Faculty of Medicine and at the Sorbonne was exactly this uh, trip by his mother to, to Paris. And this is why and how James Henry Bennett, even though he was English, became a French doctor, sort of. You see that girl at uh, Bennett's uh, feet there smoking a cigarette? I think she's smoking a Marlboro. Do you hear, do you hear that, uh, Mr. Marlboro man? Well, that's it. We're almost finished. I hope you liked this video and if you did, I hope you click the like button below. There is a widespread uh, belief now that uh, it's not good for your mental health to focus on like, on likes on the internet. But that does not apply to me. So if you don't like this, um, this video, I will have to, I don't know what I will do. My, maybe I will sue your mother. That's what I would do. And uh, that will go, that's going to have um, major consequences uh, to the mental health of your mother because she has to turn up in court. Mm, but most of all for me, of course, because I'm <laughs> most certainly going to lose it. And then I have to go out of business. And um, well, so please, please, um, well, we're done now. And um, and I'll turn off this camera. Please um, leave the name and address of your mother in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>